Hello, everyone. How was your weekend? Chilling today. Still drinking my coffee. It's a little bit leggy there, Sammy. <laughs> Actually, a lot leggy. Just getting stuff ready for our non bread and then we shall start. All right, guys, welcome to another Sunday fun day. Doing a little bit of an Indian feast today. We're gonna make a fancier style of butter chicken and some homemade naan bread. I have leftover coconut rice that I'm gonna use up as well, so I'm not gonna make any of that today on stream. But if you go back to one of my other videos, you can see how that was made. And then I'm just gonna do a simple like chili lime roasted broccoli for the side. Today is use up everything out of the fridge day. So timeline, everything should take about two hours total, even including the bread to be made from start to finish. So you can put this together pretty quick. I mean, you could also prep all this stuff the, the day before and then just heat it up whatever you need. I'm going to make the butter chicken sauce without any chicken in it. So I have chicken supremes that I'm gonna use up. That is the chicken breast with the drumstick still attached. You usually see those in like a finer dining restaurant. So I'm gonna do my variation with that today. And we'll make this skin nice and crispy instead of adding it right to the sauce. So we're gonna pan fry the chicken on its own. The naan can be made 
<laughs> yeah, just use a microwave. The naan could be made by hand or in a mixer. That's up to you. But it might be a little bit of a workout if you make it by hand, but don't be afraid. That's how I started out as well. And broccoli should only take about 20 minutes to roast in a pretty hot oven. We'll get some char on there. And one pretty important note is your chicken should definitely be marinated in yogurt for at least two hours or up to 24 hours. That's gonna help make it really tender and delicious. So ingredients before we start. I have six chicken supremes. Grab the bag here. So just a nice bag of chicken. And we're gonna need some butter and cream for the butter chicken sauce. I'm not gonna measure any of this stuff out today because I wanna see how well I do just doing it on my own from memory, I guess flavor memories and spices garam masala turmeric cumin coriander and cardamom those can all be dry and then you obviously need some onion that's a really nice base for any curry sauce as well as a little more yogurt if you want to make your sauce a little bit tangier and then ginger and garlic for flavor and then tomato paste is going to give us that really nice deep color and to garnish, you can do some fresh lime wedges or chopped up cilantro. And then there's also an optional like bird's eye chili to add if you want it a little bit spicier. So I think I'm gonna add at least one of those to our curry sauce. Just kick it up a little bit. Okay, on to our non ingredients. So this was a recipe I found online, so we're just going to go by what this says. I've never made this before. So once again, this is a first for us. Two and a quarter cups of flour, half a cup of lukewarm water, two teaspoons of active dry yeast, or you can do a little bit of starter. So probably like half a cup or a tablespoon of yeast. I am going to use a plain Greek yogurt and it has zero fat, really nice and tangy. But you could also just use like a plain yogurt as well. I wouldn't get anything with like flavoring that sweetens because then your dish will just turn out way too sweet. And then to feed our dough for the naan, we're gonna need to add a teaspoon of sugar as well as a tablespoon of olive oil. And there's also yogurt that goes into our naan bread recipe. So half a cup of that. That's gonna make our dough really nice and silky. You could also use milk as well. That's a good option if you don't have yogurt. And then for our broccoli, I just have some broccoli florets, uh, some lime zest and juice because the zest is gonna give us a lot of flavor. I'm gonna to toss it in coconut oil just to keep all of our flavors together today. And then probably finish with my favorite chili garlic oil and then salt and pepper. So order of prep for today. We're gonna to make the non dough first because that takes the longest to proof and then ball and then roll out. And then right after that, we're gonna do the chicken in our yogurt marinade. Let that sit for as long as we can until everything else comes together. And then while those two things are chilling, we can make our butter sauce. And then I do have a little bit of Indian history for the naan and the butter chicken. So I'll go through that kind of in the middle of the stream today. And after that, I'll check back with our naan dough. It should have proofed for at least an hour should be doubled in size by then. And then we're gonna prep our broccoli and go through the menu for the upcoming week. I do have a schedule of Viali. It is posted on my channel page. But if you don't want to look at that, I do Sundays to Thursdays. 
usually 3 to 6 p.m. and I'm on PST time. So let's make our Nando. I'm still finishing my coffee. Chilling. Okay, two and a quarter cups of flour is gonna go into our mixer first. Like a so. I noticed that too. A lot of people are on at that time. So I, I can change my schedule as well. Like sometimes I can prep stuff ahead of time and then just do like a quick stream later on to finish it all when I want to eat dinner. We'll see. I do sometimes start a little bit early to like make a bread dough first, but those streams are pretty, uh, pretty short, usually only half an hour to make a bread dough. And then after an hour passes, I usually start the rest of the stream and finish off dinner that way. Okay, next thing going into our dough is our teaspoon of sugar. as well as half a cup of plain yogurt. Make sure you stir it up really well. By the way, how are you guys today? Tell me you're good. Did anyone do anything exciting this weekend? Oh, expensive barbecue. That sounds great. What kind of barbecue? Like brisket or ribs? And we can just leave this yogurt out because we're gonna use it right away to marinate our chicken anyways. Yeah, you are. I ate ribs on Friday for dinner. They were good. Okay, tablespoon of olive oil. AKA just a little splash. And now half a cup of our lukewarm water and we're going to bloom the yeast in it for just a couple of seconds. If you want to temp your water, it should be around 85 to 90 Fahrenheit. What happens if you boil bread dough? Yeah, you pretty much make dumplings, I guess. Oh yeah, I guess. I mean, it depends what kind of dough you have, but like, Pierogi dough is just like water and flour and a little bit of oil mixed together. Like that's the outside of pierogi dough. 
or spatzel, like the German kind of dumpling noodle is just eggs and flour. But yeah, for sure you can boil bread dough. I mean, that's how you make dumplings in soup. Sure, it would be tasty. So I'm gonna do two teaspoons of yeast and then add my starter to the water as well. Here is my Goldilocks. I fed her yesterday with equal parts of flour and water. She got all bubbly and happy, so I'll show you kind of the texture of it. It's like super stretchy. And then this is gonna give us lots of flavor in our naan as well. And it is a whole wheat starter. I do enjoy the flavor and texture of adding just like a pinch of whole wheat flour to my starters. I pretty much try to make bread once a week now. Been experimenting with a lot of different kinds. So just give that a nice mix to incorporate your starter with the water and the yeast. What are you thinking of making, Viali? So this is just gonna chill out. It might get a little bit frothy, but we'll let that sit for a couple of seconds. Should get all happy. And I noticed that this recipe doesn't actually have any salt in it, so let's add two teaspoons of salt. That's gonna give our dough a lot of strength as well. And you always need salt to flavor dough, otherwise it just tastes a little bit bland. If you're throwing a party, Okay guys, let us make our naan bread. I'm just gonna turn my back for a sec. Let's just give this a little bit of a mix first. And now we're gonna mix this dough until it's really nice and elasticy and smooth looking. Am I throwing a party? I'm not. I just really enjoy cooking on Sundays for my family. I usually try to make something a little bit different and challenging. So that's why I usually make bread. <laughs> it's like one of my favorite things to experiment with. And then this recipe, you guys, should make eight pieces of naan bread. I think they'll probably be like pretty big once we roll them out. And then the way that I'm gonna cook them, I'm just gonna cook them up in a cast iron frying pan because I don't have like a special Indian tandoori oven. I wish I did. But we'll be cooking those up in like two-ish hours. So 
so you can definitely see how tough that dough would to be need, kneading it by hand. You definitely do not want to do that. <laughs> Unless you want to work out. You don't want to catch salmonella. I don't think I would catch salmonella from there. There's no eggs in it. <laughs> I ain't scared. And I'm just going to let that knead just a little bit. It's quite a dry dough compared to what I'm working with. But we're getting there. It's getting smoother. I love the way that that dough hook just like rolls the dough around. It's the most mesmerizing to watch. Thanks BMK. I know my internet is pretty terrible sometimes. I might have to uh, kick some people off of the computer. Cramping my style. We are almost there, guys. Pretty sticky. I learned to cook in culinary school and from my family. I went to school in Alberta, in Canada, and took a two-year program there. And I've been cooking for the last seven years. So, now that this is all happy, I don't know if you can see that properly. We are going to let this rest for at least an hour in a nice warm spot. So I usually put mine by the fireplace or just keep it beside the stove if it's warm there. And then that should double in size. Hello, MK2. 
Welcome to the stream. It's late for you there, isn't it? Hey guys. guys this weekend okay jokes let's marinate our chicken so the quicker we get that marinating the longer it can sit I do, Mia. I'm gonna go over it just in a little bit after I get our chicken marinated and I have a little bit of free time. So I'm just gonna marinate this right in the Ziploc bag that I put this in earlier. And I think I'm gonna do a mix of like yogurt and spices. <laughs> I know. And you know what, it's a holiday tomorrow as well. So I was like trying to decide if I wanted to stream or if I didn't, but I was like, I think that they might get a little upset if I take like three days off. So we're gonna crush it tomorrow together. Let's add like three quarters of a cup of yogurt to that. a mix of four I know you would be sad so garam masala which is just like a basic Indian blend of herbs and spices it doesn't even say what's in it I don't know if that's gonna focus but it just says ingredients spices and herbs and then some ground cumin ground coriander, which is the seed from the cilantro plant, and then some ground cardamom. <laughs> I believe it, Mia. I got you. Let's do like half a tablespoon of each. Just kind of sprinkle that all over. And then we'll toss it around after and once we close up the bag. Foptics with the sub. Thank you. I appreciate that. And is there still no sound on those notifications? because I looked into that this weekend and everyone is saying it's an OBS thing, so the streaming software I'm using. And that's just because it's on a MacBook, I guess. For some reason, the notification sound isn't going through. But when I do like the preview on my end, it does. So everyone is pretty upset about that. And that's just happened recently since the last update. I'm hoping that they fix it soon, but if not, I found another streaming software that I'll just switch to if it doesn't get fixed. 
because I worked hard on like picking those sounds out for you guys. And I know it's a fun part of the stream. And then I know someone was asking about like sub badges, but I can't do those for you guys until I'm a partner. So we got a little bit to go, but we do have an emoticon coming out pretty soon. It's still pending its approval, but I did upload it last week. Sweet Foptics, I will check you out. I know I have like a 20 foot cable in here too. <laughs> and we're not gonna add any salt and pepper to this at this point. We'll do that after when we pan fry it. Make sure you get everything really nice and coated. I would definitely recommend doing this the day before though just so your chicken can sit and marinate longer. It'll turn out way more tender. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, that looks good, like completely mixed up. Now I can put that back in the fridge and it can chill out while we prep the rest of our meal. I do have to run out and grab an onion real quick for our butter sauce. satisfying <laughs> yeah it does and I'm also gonna grab my garlic and ginger at the same time so I'll be back in like two seconds What are the five main mother sauces? Um, bechamel, tomato sauce. What else? That's a that's a good question. I'm terrible. I know the derivatives. Oh, hollandaise, bearnaise. Huh? You don't tell me. It's a quiz. I haven't cooked like any of that stuff for so, so long. What are the last two? I know. What is the last two? Velute and Espanol. Okay, grabbing my ginger. I love it, Foptics. Keep me on my toes. Okay, I have a little bit of ginger here from a previous thing that I cooked and I'm gonna use just a little bit more. You don't wanna overpower our butter chicken with ginger. So first things first. Dice this onion up. Get in the center here. I had to Google the last two, but I did get the first three. Okay. 
I can definitely say I've never made a velouté or an espanol sauce for like the last seven years. <laughs> Okay, let's see if I'm gonna cry today with this onion. Okay guys, let's do a nice small dice on this onion. That way we'll get lots of flavor into our sauce. Let's take this peel off of here. So just follow the natural lines in your onion and the curve as well. And then you won't get any awkward pieces when you're cutting. And if you can see, I'm not completely cutting through the end of the onion. That way it stays all together. It's true, Foptics. Thank you for the follow as well. That way you'll always know when I'm going live. Get your notifications. Are you a chef as well, Foptics? Or you just love cooking? Okay, other side, guys. The more consistent you cut your onion, the better it's gonna cook later on. You don't get any weird little burnt pieces in your sauce. I've been streaming for just about a month now. I think I started the second week of January. That's awesome. What do you do now then? You just like stream for fun. Okay, let's do three garlic cloves. These ones aren't that big. They're uh, pretty medium size. I feel like I'm doing well. You're a lineman. Sweet. I've been doing consistently like five days a week for about two and a half to three hours. So you can see how easy this garlic is to peel after you smash it. And we're gonna mince that in later, so I'm not gonna process that anymore. And then I just wanna show you how this ginger is already cut. So I've already sliced it thin. So I have to make sure that this other ginger I'm gonna process is gonna be the same size. Here. And we're just going to want to peel that skin off. These little pieces are pretty awkward. This is like some of the smallest ginger I've ever seen, but try to not waste too much when you're peeling that skin off. You can also use like a vegetable peeler if you want, or the back of your knife as well. Trayton, what is up? I am cooking some butter chicken today and homemade naan bread, as well as just a simple side of garlic and lime roasted broccoli. Doing a little bit of a different uh, theme here today. I don't think I've done Indian food yet on my stream. And I actually saw, I don't know if you guys watched Twin Vaders, 
but they made butter chicken the other day and I was like I have to make butter chicken now She, she's not even on there. Okay, almost there. I definitely recommend picking out bigger pieces of ginger just so you don't have too much waste when you're trying to peel the skin off because any awkward pieces, you're going to get quite a bit of waste off of there. Okay, good to go. Seriously, pickled eggs? That's amazing. I just said I was gonna do it. And here we are. Doggo's name is Posh. Or some people call her Kush because they're crazy. She's a great doggo. She likes to taste test vegetables. Make sure they're fresh for me. is up Yahtzee how are you how was your weekend same with you eggs what did you guys do this weekend <laughs> it's true abs <laughs> he had to like clear himself out it got built up Yahtzee, you having a stout tonight? Is that what, what you're drinking? I'm just gonna chop this ginger super fine. That way it'll fry up really nicely in our pan for our sauce. And if you're worried about it being too tough, it's gonna break down when we cook the sauce out. So don't even worry about that. Raining, that sucks. We actually had some sunshine this weekend. Finally. Got all the energy back. I think I'm gonna go over this ginger just one more time. You could have also grated it with like a box grater or a micro plane as well if you wanted it finer, but this is gonna be great. So I think I'm gonna make the base of my sauce with a mix of butter and coconut oil. I think that's gonna be really tasty. Go-karting on ice? <laughs> what? That sounds crazy, guys. I was gonna say, how does that even work? Like, do the do you have chains on your tires or what? 
plate. Put screws in the tires. The biggest thing of coconut oil. <laughs> Let's do like a good heaping tablespoon of each coconut oil and butter to start our sauce. I'm going to make it in my cast iron saucepan, but by all means, make it in a pot or whatever you want. There's no rules. I'm starting it on medium high heat just to get like a really nice caramelization on the onion, garlic, and ginger. Who's this? Triton, thank you for the follow. Welcome. And then coconut oil is also going to help our butter not burn as fast as we saute the onions. That way we can cook it for a lot longer together. What kind of snowy? That sounds like so much fun. Then I'm also gonna get out my cream right now. Just a uh, plain whipping cream, full fat. So if you're at the grocery store, at least 33% fat. And we're gonna wait for our pan to get nice and hot before we cook the onions. So I'm just gonna move my camera over as well right now. Ta -da. There we go. The fun is starting and the time is 3.53. So once I get this sauce going, I'm gonna go check on the non bread dough. It's almost at an hour already of proof time. Vanilla stout. Is this for me? That's for you to try. Oh. I've been told to taste this vanilla stout, guys. But it's not for me to drink. I don't know why, but. Okay, that's for you to drink. That's yours. Mmm. That's delicious. Oh, it is mine now. No, no, okay, now it is mine. I've been gifted with beer. Like? Cheers, my friends. Huh? Like? Uh, sure, why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? There's no, there's one in here. I'll get it. Yeah, Yahtzee. I knew you would like that. And while the pan heats, I'm just gonna get Tomato paste ready. I think you can also use just like plain canned tomatoes if you want. Just the tomato paste is gonna make your sauce a lot thicker because the tomato flavor is just concentrated. It's been cooked down. All the work is done for us. So I'm gonna use like just under two cans, which is 300 mils of tomato paste. And our pan is starting to smoke. It's a good sign. Now I know I can add the onions. 
I'm not gonna add the ginger quite yet because it does cook a lot faster than the onions do. Same with the garlic. So we'll wait for a little bit on that. Junior. <laughs> Sounds delicious. Kale. It's okay. Now you're here. We've been waiting for you. How are you? Welcome, my friends. Just started cooking the butter chicken sauce. But we're gonna keep the chicken separate. We're doing Kate's version today. A little bit more fancy. JR. So those onions are probably gonna go for a good like 10 minutes before we add anything else to them. We wanna get some really nice color on there. <laughs> you were lost, but you found us. Or did we find you? I'm also gonna leave my flour out just so I can roll up my non bread later. I don't know how sticky the dough is gonna be at all. Hello, Marianne, how are you today? Hope you had a great weekend so far. And I am going to just grab a little bird's eye chili so the little red chilies that they use in a lot of thai food just to spice up our our meal a bit today i'm not gonna do jalapeno and i always keep my bird's eye chilies in the freezer because usually you have to buy like a huge bag of them and then you're like well what do i do with this now but they stay like forever in the freezer just a little tip So here we go, and I actually grew this in my garden one summer. Woohoo! Yeah, Kale, it's a little bit fancy. Got a stir on these guys, cooking up really nice already. Yeah, now I can torture you, eggs. 
That was terrible. It was like 8.30 in the morning. I was like, I need butter chicken. Just checked on the non-do. Nothing too crazy is happening yet. So I'm going to give it another 20 minutes at least to proof up. Is that rice? No, Chuck. It's the onions for the start of the butter chicken sauce. I'm actually using leftover coconut rice today. I need to clear out the fridge a little bit. Handy dandy mincer. We're almost there on the onions. Yeah, Pampered Chef. Always need people here to eat. <laughs> Plus, like, leftover starches and stuff in the fridge are always great for snacks, especially on the weekends. And if you cook it properly, uh, it should last in the fridge for at least a week. There ain't nothing wrong with leftovers. What? Donation. Om dog. You need some salt bay, Kate. I'll remember to do some salt bay. Thank you so much for the donation. Great way to start the stream. All right, guys. I think it's almost time to add our ginger and garlic to the pan. Getting some really nice color on these onions. Yo, eggs, how was your uh, pizza the other night? the ginger and garlic for nearly as long as the onions. We're just going to get them fragrant at this point. And then before we add any liquids, we have to make sure that we toast our spices as well. Make them really nice and aromatic. Super quiet, Annie's. Nah, we've been chilling. It's not bad. 
How was your weekend, sir? It was mint. That is great to hear. <laughs> Classic. Another donation from Van Isle. Thank you. How is the stout? It is delicious. Great way to spend a Sunday while I'm cooking. Cook with Amy's video. You did it. Yeah, I don't have much info on this beer, but it's from Lighthouse Brewing, so out here in BC. It's a vanilla stout. Really, really nice to drink. Would go great with like any desserts. All right, guys, this looks great. Time to add our spices. I think I'm just going to add about under a tablespoon for pretty much all of the spices. So that was cumin. The next one I'm going to add is turmeric. That one's pretty strong though, so let's only add a teaspoon of that. That's gonna give us some great color to our sauce. And cardamom is also super strong, so I'm just gonna do a teaspoon of that as well. If you can or have access to it, I would use like the whole pods instead. Next one I'm using is coriander. Gmail. What is up? Mom has wine, I bet. Okay, tablespoon or just under a tablespoon of coriander seed. That's the crushed one. I quit. What? And now, <laughs> tablespoon of garam masala. No. I'm just going to scoop this one. And one cinnamon stick. You can use ground cinnamon as well, but I had these left over. Of course, Amy's. Do it up. Let's give this a stir. Now it smells amazing. You can see how the spices just soaked up all of the oils that were in the pan. Now, I'm just gonna add a little bit of cream right now to just cool off the onions from cooking. And then I'm gonna add my tomato paste next. Monaco, hello. How's it going? So you can already see how yellow the turmeric has made the sauce. But once we mix this tomato paste in, it should go that really nice rich orange color. And 
then throw our chili in. Smells amazing. Definitely not a healthy dish at all, but it is delicious. I added about 800 mils of cream. We are making butter chicken, Gmail. How many sticks of butter? All of the butter. No, I only used about a tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon of a, and a half of butter. And then also did my own little variation and did coconut oil as well. Turn this down to a simmer. We're gonna cook it nice and low and slow. And then you'll find that the sauce goes a lot darker as you continue to cook it. So don't worry if it's a little bit pale to start with. And if I need to, I'll finish it with a little bit of yogurt afterwards. But we're gonna let that cook first. Not even gonna put any salt in it yet because it is gonna reduce, so we don't wanna make it too salty. Clean up my little mess. And then we're gonna check on that non bread. Definitely gonna be a really nice flavorful sauce. See all the specks of spices in there. And I will leave all the spices out still, just in case I think it's missing something later on. That way I can easily go and pick whatever spice I feel like it's missing. But hopefully I made it on point and I won't have to really adjust it at all. Okay, I'm just going to grab the Nando. So, you missed the onions, no! Well, there is a full one in there. So we'll have to clip it later. Here is our Nando. It hasn't proofed up too, too much yet. So I'm just gonna keep that over by the fire <laughs> and let it rest over there. And then guess what? It's time for some fun facts. And I think I might need to taste the sauce 
before I start that. What kind of beer? A vanilla stout. You use golden curry? That is fine. Don't even say that you're a lazy cook. At least you decide to cook at home. Because a ton of people don't. I still need to try Japanese curry. Ibrick, thank you for the follow. Did I just hit? I just hit my goal. Shots. Oh yeah. Oh. Cheers. Shots, 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 shots. I'm up to 75, guys. That's amazing. And anyone in here that has not followed yet, it's just great to do that because then you're notified as soon as I go live. That way you don't miss anything. And now I have to restart my goal tonight. Next one is going to be 100, I think. Just keep going from there. This is great, guys. Look at that coat of the spoon already. Holy schmooks. Mmm. That's gonna be good. I can already tell it needs something sweet near the end, but I'm gonna let it cook down and see how the flavor changes as time goes on. And one little pointer to find out how your butter chicken sauce is done. It should start to separate and form like little oil slicks on the top of the sauce. That's when you know it's cooked very well. You might have to turn your notifications on then, Chuck. Because you should eventually get an email that says, Cook with Kate is now live. And then you won't miss a thing. So true, Gmail. That's why I love cooking at home. I'm gonna eventually start like costing out the meals as well. And hopefully that helps people. Thank you for the follow, sir. I appreciate that. Okay, fun fact time. Nini's get ready. So, butter chicken is also called Merg Makani. That's the other Indian name. And it refers to a dish consisting of chicken in a mildly spiced curry sauce. I think that's why it is so popular, just because it's not super spicy and it does have like a lot of spices, but it's just more flavorful than anything. The dish has its roots in Punjabi cuisine and was created in the 1950s in Delhi by three men that opened a restaurant there. The chicken is usually cooked in a tandoor oven. So that's like a ceramic oven that's round. And then they just cook it on skewers over top of that. So it does have like a really nice charcoal flavor. Obviously I don't have a tandoor, so I'm just gonna pan fry it instead. It's allowed. <laughs> in the summer though, I'll probably do like a really good grilled chicken tikka masala or something like that so you can grill roast it or pan fry it as well if you don't have a tandoor because I'm sure many of you don't there are many variations on the composition and spicing of the sauce but most main spices include garam masala so that's an Indian spice mix ginger garlic coriander cumin cardamom cinnamon, turmeric, and chili. And then lime or lemon can be used to just balance out the tanginess. And that makes a really nice velvety texture as well. So we're probably gonna finish it with fresh lime later on when the sauce is done. But it is quite easy for people to make this dish wrong by either making it too sweet or too spicy. So I'm quite sure that if you go to a couple places and try their butter chicken, they're all gonna taste different. And there's nothing wrong with that. There really isn't. I do like this dish because you can put kind of your own spin on it. 
but I would love to try like the original version just to see how mine does compare. Okay, on to the non bread. So that is just a leavened oven baked flatbread, which is also done in the tandoor. And they usually just like slap it onto the side. It's really cool. I love watching them make non bread. And that is also found in the Middle East and Central and South Asia. So it's quite a popular bread. The earliest English appearance is in 1810, and it was called Nan, so N-A-N instead of N-A-A-N, and that directly translates to the meaning bread. So that all makes sense. But the spelling Nan, so N-A-A-N, wasn't attested until 1979, and is now the English norm for spelling it. So that's a pretty recent thing. The bread is typically served hot and brushed with butter or oil, and it's great to use it as a scoop for like sauces and meats. So instead of using your fork, just like take your bread and scoop up your sauce and meat and eat it like that. It's really good to make pitas out of as well, and you can do non-bread pizza. There's lots of variations. And I also do love getting like the stuffed non-breads. So one of the best ones I've had is coconut and cashew stuffed and drizzled with honey. Super, super good. But you can also get the non-bread stuffed with various like minced meats as well. Let's give this a little stir. And I'm just gonna push this to the back burner. It's a little bit smaller and not as powerful. Just to keep the sauce on a really low simmer. But the color has already deepened since we started making this sauce. And obviously the darker you cook your onions and stuff, the darker the sauce is gonna end up as well. Pickled eggs, that sounds good. It's owned by a clothing creator, that's cool. Peshwari Nun. Sorry. I love that one though. Like I love anything with nuts and honey on it. How come it's a, an abomination? That makes me sad. Okay, we are at 423. I can get my broccoli out and start prepping that with you guys. That way I can marinate a little bit with the lime and stuff before we roast it later. came from then, abs? Like, it's very handy having you in here because now I'm learning stuff from you. I didn't know that. Sorry. 
So true, eggs. So true. Sounds good, Anies. I won't watch it. I won't do it. I'll just let it sit there. Oh, there's totally an appeal for that kind of stuff. Bye, sir. Have a great night. Thanks for popping in. All right, guys. Broccoli. So I buy mine already with the florets done up, but I do have to touch them up just a bit and make them all one consistent size. So I'm gonna see what some of the smaller ones are and kind of meet it in the middle. That way it all roasts really nice and evenly. I don't like mushy broccoli. So those all look good over there. And I like to just like just cut through the stem and then pull it apart. And that's gonna give you just a more natural look to your florets, if anyone cares. <laughs> And I also don't like to trim off the stems as much either because you that's still a lot of flavor in there. And if you cook it properly, it shouldn't stay crunchy. I don't get why people always cut it off so close to the floret. It's still usable. Holy one kilo for six pounds that is dangerous okay now i think it makes everyone fart but that's also what helps with digestion so since we're eating like such a rich meal tonight i thought i would add something green into the mix Let's get our sheet pan out. I'm just gonna grab some parchment to line this with. And then let's check on our sauce. Seems to be uh, bubbling, along, bubbling away over here. Turn it down even more. Definitely do not want to burn this. Just because all those spices in there would taste super, super bitter. But that is getting thick. <laughs> yeah, it's gotta be the fiber. So true abs, so true. You'd be in a food coma for at least a day. Okay, let's spread this out. Try to get one nice even layer. Don't want to crowd our pan too, too much. Otherwise it's just going to steam instead of roast. Kabuli. Now you're going to make them really upset. Okay, 
Hey guys, just going to grab some fresh lime real quick. And I also grabbed the fresh cilantro when I was out there. I can chop that up in a little bit. Now I'm just rolling this lime to get all the juice loosened up. But I am going to zest it first, but not onto the broccoli right away because that's going to burn in the oven. And that's also gonna taste bitter. So just do your zest in a little bowl and then sprinkle it on after the broccoli is roasted. I love to use a microplane for zesting any citruses or it works well on ginger as well as like hard cheeses like Parmesan. And I put a link to this posh in my Amazon page. So on my channel page, I have linked like quite a few things that I use on an everyday basis in my kitchen. Feel free to check that out. And then you also don't want to zest too deep either. Because once you hit the white stuff, the pith, that's also really bitter. But these microplanes tend to do like the perfect amount of zest. There is no pith in there. Five star spicy curry. I think it's gonna be good abs. I don't even think I've done this before with broccoli. But I thought it would be like a really fresh side to do with the butter chicken. Okay, now we're gonna squeeze our juice over our broccoli. Cheese and chili naan, you are sick and I love it. I think I'm gonna leave that at half a juice or half a lime that's juice. I don't wanna put too, too much on. Cause it is gonna change in flavor as we roast it. And let's just drizzle with a little bit of olive oil. So something not too, too strong in flavor. And that's also going to help the broccoli get a nice char in the oven. And then finish with some cracked pepper and salt. <laughs> a hot pocket, pretty much. Just like an Indian version. Now you've reminded me of like the commercials for Hot Pockets way back when. I got the little jingle in my head. Well, you guys will have to document that uh, feast abs if that ends up happening. 
because I would like to see some authentic Indian restaurants from London for sure. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Super, super simple. I don't think I want to put any other spices on here either. Let the butter sauce speak for itself. Okay. I think it's time to divvy up the non bread. And then that's going to prove for at least another half hour. But I'm going to just clear the area in front of me so you guys can watch. Right, now it's growing. So that looks nice and doubled in size. Now the recipe I'm using says it makes eight pieces of naan. But I don't want to make it too big so I am going to fry this in a frying pan. So I want to make sure by the time it's all rolled out that it's still going to fit in the pan. So I might just make 10 smaller non breads instead of eight big ones. And then it says the typical size is to weigh out the balls to three and a half ounces. Okay, that is some sticky stuff. I wish Gmail. And if I had a tender, that would be a blast. Get our dough scraper out. So I'm just going to divide this in half and then into five pieces. Try to make them all the same size. That way they'll all cook for the same amount of time. Okay, that looks good. Let's see how hard this is to ball up. I might need a little bit of flour here. Just a touch. I'm gonna move these just so I have some room to roll this. Clear the area. Okay. 
So I'm just using my palm and my fingers to kind of push the dough together. And then as I'm rotating, it's making a really nice and tight ball. You can watch YouTube videos of this online, but you will be looking for something like this. So it's nice and smooth on the outside. And then we're just gonna put those onto a sheet pan now and let them proof up for at least another half an hour before we go to flatten and cook them on the stove top. But burglar, hello. How was your weekend? Just balling up the non bread right now. It's proofed for the last hour. You guys don't even want to know how many times I've done this motion in like the last three years. We made pizza dough pretty much every day from scratch at the brewery I worked with. And we would end up with how many balls of dough, Sam? 120 balls of dough. Pretty much every day or every two days. So pretty much like a good 15 minutes straight of just doing this, but they were seven ounce portions. Not like these ones are small, like two ounce, so. You get the motion down pat pretty quick if you have to do that many. Nice, I'm glad you got a nice break. It's been great. Went to see Jumanji yesterday. Had a pretty good burger beforehand for dinner. It's been quite relaxing here. Ready to start another week of streaming with you guys. All right, guys, I'm just gonna grab a sheet pan real quick and wash my hands. First, clean up this little area. Have a tawa. I don't know what that is. What are you effing about, but I need to look up what a tawa is. Oh, a flat griddle. I don't, but I do have like a nice cast iron pan that I'm gonna fry up the naan in. Oh yeah, I definitely dropped the dough cutter in the sink. It was scary, guys. Okay, line this with uh, parchment just so your bread doesn't stick as it proofs again. It has a round side, but that's why I made the balls a little bit smaller just so I'm hoping that it will fit perfectly in the pan. I did have a really nice like flat griddle pan that I always use for pancakes, but it's packed away when we moved here. It's in storage. Okay, so these are already sticking to the counter. Uh, 
upside down. Interesting. Well, this is my first non dough, so I'm sure I'll be experimenting with more as time goes on. Yeah, I do have a gas stove, so I'm good on that aspect. Okay, so I'm just gonna cover these with a tea towel. It's like putting the babies for a nap for half an hour. And make sure you put it in a warm place again. use a rolling pan to roll the flatbreads out. I don't think I'm going to use like the tortilla press or anything because it doesn't have to be round. I think that's why I like making none or like eating it is because no piece of it is usually the same size. Okay, we are all cleaned up. Just gonna check the time, 4.47. So at 5.15, I'm gonna check those dough balls again and we should be good to go. So here's my pan. I'm gonna hope that this works. And then let's get a check on our chicken that's marinating as well. Maybe give it a little toss around. Interesting abs. I'm gonna try this not on stream one day, just in case something goes terribly wrong. Even though I'm sure that would be really entertaining. Okay, chicken is getting happy. Do it on stream. Yeah. Well, I always said I didn't want it to be like a staged show. It's real life cooking, guys. You're allowed to make mistakes. At least I have you guys here so we can learn together. It made sense. It totally made sense. Okay, I'm gonna leave this chicken out of the fridge now because we're gonna be cooking it in like the next 45 minutes. And things do marinate better when they are not in a cold fridge, just so everyone knows. But I wouldn't leave any meats out for like more than two hours at a time. That's like max. Otherwise, we are not being safe with our food. Okay, that finally stopped sticking to the bottom. And I'm just gonna get my pan out for the chicken as well while we're waiting. We're gonna chill for a little bit, guys. 
If anyone has any questions or any food related things that they want to talk about, let's go for it. Seen cat. Thank you for the bits. How rich is daddy? Um, not. <laughs> Let's see. How's it going? Who cheered up? Actually, Mia, are you still alive? Are you in here? I'm gonna go over what I'm making for the next week. Cause I know you guys look forward to that. Yeah. Okay, so tomorrow I usually do a meatless Monday. So I was thinking of doing some veggie burgers with a chickpea, which I'm gonna just use the chickpea flour as well as some navy beans as the base. And then I'm gonna pickle some red onions to put on top. I did, but, oh, also while I'm, I'm thinking about it, I looked into the sub badges cause you were asking and I can't do any of that until I'm a partner. So not yet. Maybe in a couple months, let's hope. And I put the text to speech up as well for any donations or bits or cheers that you guys have. I know you wanted that. Yeah, one day. And I'm also looking into like a different streaming software because the OBS is not playing like my sounds for notifications, which sucks. And a lot of people have been pro having this problem using like Macs and they haven't fixed it since November, since the last update. So looking into another software and hopefully get everything streamlined. Okay, back to veggie burgers. So I'm gonna do some pickled red onions for on top uh, pesto aioli and I will be making a brioche bun from scratch that day so I'll do a little bit of an earlier stream tomorrow probably do like a 1 to 130 to make the dough and then finish it off later on from like 3 p.m. onwards oh yeah but we'll get it working and then Tuesday is gonna be so much fun we're doing a Taco Tuesday. That's usually like my travel food day is to learn a different cuisine. <laughs> Dong big, hello, <laughs> welcome. And I'm gonna do some chorizo tacos. So I'm gonna be making the tortillas from scratch. I gotta go grab some masa tomorrow. Yes, Taco Tuesday. And probably do some fish tacos as well. Make some really nice sauces. So one that is a mix of avocado and tomatillo, kind of like a salsa verde with a creamy avocado. 
And then classic pico de gallo. So your onions, tomatoes, cilantro. What kind of fish? I'm not sure yet. If you guys have any requests, by all means request something. But I'll probably do like a cod or a snapper of sorts. I know salsa verde is like crack. And I'll finally get to use my blender that day. Fun. Try an abs fish. Yes. Lionfish. I'm not sure if I can get that here, deadly apple. But I'll look for it. Oh. Is it illegal? You crazy goldfish. Never. That's terrible. And have you guys ever eaten jicama? It's spelled jicama. I'm going to make like a really nice fresh salad that I had in Mexico before. It's like a super fresh root that soaks up like anything that you put into it. So we'll definitely do like a nice lime cilantro mix. Okay, lionfish. We can't eat that abs. We ain't eating those. Those are like venomous. but they're very beautiful. Clam dip. That sounds all right. Not amazing though. And then Wednesday for Valentine's Day, I think I'm gonna do a sous vide creme brulee. So in jars, I'm sure none of you have seen that before. A little bit risky to do because sometimes the jars will explode so let's cross our fingers that nothing happens and for the main course i was gonna make like a chicken tom kagai soup so a thai soup with just some stir fried greens but i'm not too sure if i'm set on that yet <laughs> that's what i said but And Thursday for Thirsty Thursday, so using the sous vide again, I'm going to do some pork chops, probably with whiskey, and smashed garlic rosemary potatoes. Super, super good. They're boiled and then baked off, so they get crispy and delicious. And probably some roast cabbage with that as well. Get some nice color on that plate. A solid hot dog mac and cheese dinner? That might just happen one day. Yeah, one pan meals. I could easily do those just for it to take up like three hours of a stream is a little bit difficult. But by all means, I could do like a couple different ones. Because I do love one pan meals for sure. But Dong, pretty much all of the stuff that I make is less than $10 a plate. So it's still going to be cheaper than anything that you're going to eat out. I will start food costing my items as well and find somewhere to post them. How many plates do I have? I usually cook for four people, but usually make enough leftovers for like six meals in total, just for lunches the next day and such. Sometimes I make like way too much and end up freezing like chili or something in jars. But that's super easy to pull out as well for any lunches. You guys, I don't have the next Sunday fun day planned yet. So if anyone has any requests, go for it. It's usually like a more involved cooking day for me. 
something a little bit fancier maybe. Tuna casserole, holy, I haven't ate that in so long. Super good. Potato chips on top, always. I've had that many a times in my childhood. And I always got so excited when I had it. Let's get a stir on here. Do I like Taco Bell? I mean, I used to eat it quite a bit as a kid, but I can probably say I haven't eaten it in at least 10 years. <laughs> And plus there aren't a ton of them around where I live. Like there's more taco times than anything. I don't know why. That's just what the people choose. What is the cuisine that my region is known for? Well, I would definitely say it's focused on seafood. But Canadians don't really have a set cuisine. I will end up cooking like a lot more Canadian cuisine when summertime comes around. I wanna do some farm tours, whether it's like a sheep farm or a pig farm. And then also I love to cook with like any fresh veggies that are grown here. Yeah, maple syrup. Maple syrup and everything. I do love poutine. But like Canadian cuisine is so much more than that. It's pretty much whatever you want it to be. Yes, farm tour stream. And I might be going on like a fishing charter for my birthday, so in a month. We'll see, we'll see guys. Maybe I can catch something and then bring it home and cook it on stream. I would also love to go like foraging for mushrooms as well when the time comes. Okay, 10 minutes until we start doing our non bread. And then for our broccoli later on, I'm gonna roast them at 425 Fahrenheit in a convect oven just to get a really nice char on the outside of them. And that way it'll stay nice and crisp on the inside as well. Cook it hot from the outside in. And then at that temp as well, we'll be able to finish the chicken supremes off in the oven. The chicken will probably pan fry for like a good five to seven minutes skin side down and then I'll flip it over and finish the rest in the oven. And in total, it'll probably take 12 to 15 minutes to cook because they are pretty big pieces. 
especially because you do have the bones still in there in the breast. It takes a little bit longer to cook through. Farm tour. Yeah, pickled eggs. I think I want to go to like a couple of farms around here and do a little tour. Hopefully come home with some of their food that they produce. I have asked a couple to like cook on stream with me too, but they always say they're too busy. French food, yes, of course, but I had someone request like Blanquette veal to be made. Let me write this down. I know, I think that would be so much fun. We could do some classic French food. Maybe I'll pick something out of Julia Child's cookbook. Oh, beef bourguignon, so good. I love that dish. Harvest Moon, yeah. I don't think I played that one, but I've heard about it. Sam, did you play that? Yeah. <laughs> Stardew is so fun too. Okay, I'm just gonna be right back two seconds. Hey, I am here. It's such a long game, hey? It's so scary sometimes though when it gets dark. <laughs> oh, I do have some actually good news for you guys. I know you'll like this. I have a line on like being a private chef or caterer in my area. So I'll probably know next week if that's gonna start up. But I've been waiting for a month to like find something like this. And finally, it's here. I got a phone call on Friday from a lady that I knew from like my third kitchen that I worked in. Throw us in the pan. Yeah, get in there, that butter sauce, doctor. Thanks, eggs, it's getting there. It's getting nice and dark for sure. like to keep stirring it, I don't know why. So it just keeps transforming every time I do so. I can put the band hammer down. 
Because there's no way I'm clicking on that. <laughs> Gone. He's out of here. Of course it would be. Just because it's Sunday fun day? Come on. Okay, what other French food do you guys want to see me cook? Do some crazy stuff. I still need to cook lamb as well. I have one person here that's not a huge fan of lamb, but every time I've made it, he's eaten it, so I guess I do all right. That's exactly what I was doing, but I can also just go grab one of my cookbooks real quick. This is the book to rule them all, guys. So this was the textbook that I used for school. It is a Bible. But like it goes through how to cook everything. Starts off really basic and then gets difficult from there. But like it even goes over food presentation and garnishing. And it does have a little bit of baking in it as well. a terrine one day or something fun quiche from scratch yeah make a really nice pastry i'm down see those are super good to do in like mini portions and then make them all ahead of time and then pull them out for like breakfasts during the week really easy breakfast prep dish already Monday there. The hunter. Crazy. Broccoli and cheese quiche. Yes. So good. Have you made frittata as well? That's like the simple version. I always like to line the bottom with like potatoes or squash as well instead of having a crust of sorts. Okay, let's go check. Not yet. It's so, so easy. I'm going to go grab those little non balls and see where we're at. Blow it up, guys. They're looking good. Woohoo! Okay, now I can start rolling these out. And I'm gonna roll them all out to begin with. That way I can easily cook them one after the other instead of trying to fool around while I'm trying to cook the chicken and the broccoli. It's all about setting yourself up ahead of time. And I might grab a couple more pieces of parchment as well 
just to separate them on the pan. Raclette day, yes. We've actually been meaning to buy a raclette pan for quite a while now. That is such a great idea, but I actually just had that the first time in October of last year. It's at my boyfriend's parents' house and his mom is German, so they're quite used to doing that all the time, but it was so much fun. That would have to be like a prep and eating stream. Just because like one of the best parts is like cooking all this stuff on the pan. I have to say though, it does work really well. Like it gets super hot that you can fry bacon on it and stuff. Hey, this dough is sticky. Let's turn this down. The top is not super sticky, just the bottom is. So I'm gonna see how well this works just by using the rolling pin on it. These look like they're going to be the perfect size for my pen. It does get quite sticky though, so make sure you keep it nicely floured. And that looks like it's a pretty good thickness. I'm just going to kind of shake off any excess flour. The dough is nice and smooth and stretchy. I'm pretty happy with this. Fue, yeah. You're bringing me back to like culinary school now. You should be able to fit like two or three non breads onto one sheet pan at a time. I'm Googling like fouet right now. Do you mean effoute? What is that? An airy bread served with rillettes? Yum. I've never even seen that before. Okay, next dough ball, guys. Orange blossom water. Such like an old school thing to use in cooking. need to do some Cajun stuff, hey? I really like Cajun food. One place I would love to go still is New Orleans.
So this dough is a little bit sticky as you roll it out, but nothing crazy. Just make sure it's an even thickness all around. That way it'll cook perfectly. That's amazing, but I'm so jealous. Okay, so here's our three doughs. We're gonna keep going. Yes, abs. Now I really want it. It's been too long. You can find a pretty good like little raclette setup on Amazon. They're not super expensive. Plus, I'm pretty sure if you treat it right, it'll last quite a while. Hey. Keep in mind to roll out your non bread the same size as the pan that you're gonna cook it in. You don't wanna make it too big. Sounds good, but we'll be here. What is fast knock abs? And where are you located? Okay, we have five left. And it's just 5.30, so I feel like I'm pretty on track with today's meal. After I get these rolled out, I can start the oven for the broccoli, as well as the pan for the chicken. And then while that's all going in the oven, we can cook our non bread on the stove top. Fun. Sounds really fun. Sam, you ever celebrated fast knock? Never.
What's your favorite Swiss dish abs? Had to feed the guinea pigs. Oh my God, that's amazing. I love their little noises that they make. They're so cute. Oh. So is it pretty basic then, would you say? Yeah, they are hilarious. I remember my cousins had some when I was growing up. I always used to watch them for like a good amount of time. on my last non bread guys the dough does feel super nice and soft though what is this Sneaky Christmas tunes on my playlist. I don't know abs, that sounds pretty good to me. Although I am like a cheese fanatic. Good. I got four layers on here. Just bring that over to the stove. Clean up my little mess. Always cleaning as I go. Wait, there's always lots of room to keep prepping the rest of the meal. Just one day, just eat as many beignets as you can. I would die. Just eat like crawfish all day. Oh man. Yum. All right, guys. Let us turn on our oven here. 425 convect. Let's taste this sauce. It's looking quite deadly. And even if you just wanted to make the sauce on its own and like freeze it for future use, I would totally do that.
The spices have definitely cooked into the sauce really nice. It's not as bitter as it was when I first tried it before. Yes, eggs. I definitely need to do that too. But I think our butter chicken sauce needs a little bit of sweetness. So I think I'm gonna use some honey. Just to keep it really nice and floral as well. They're spicy. I've always wanted to do like a traditional crawfish boil like that. But it's more fun when you're doing it with like a good 20 people. I just added a couple of teaspoons of honey to our sauce. That should bring everything together. And then we'll balance it out after with our fresh lime juice. And I also haven't added salt to it either, so that's gonna change the flavor again. And then I am gonna lay out the chicken onto some paper towel just to get the skin nice and dry. That way it'll crisp up really nice. I don't wanna burn like any of the yogurt and spices onto it. But we had to marinate it all. Like we couldn't not marinate this. It wouldn't be the same. It smells so good. Boiled peanuts. I think it was on like the Anthony Bourdain show that I saw the boiled peanuts. Or I've just heard about them, but people do go wild for it. I'm just gonna kinda tamp the chicken skin and then flip it over. Just make it nice and dry. And then we're gonna season with some salt and pepper before it goes into the pan. But even this chicken smells unreal. And that's only marinated for two hours so far. Holy. Good old gas station snacks. Oh no, the tender fell off. Okay, I'm just gonna stick that little piece into the sauce and let that slowly cook. So that's not gonna cook the same now that it's not attached. Can you please open it? Thank you. Just washing my hands, guys. 
little baby tender. Nobody will know. Okay, make sure you get a really nice coating of salt on the skin here. Pretty big pieces of meat. Fresh pepper. And we are good to go on there. If I was to be like super picky, I would have cleaned off like all of the meat around the bones. That's what you're supposed to do in like a fine dining restaurant, but I didn't want to waste the meat and also not fool around with it a lot beforehand on the stream to marinate it. So we're just going to keep the meat on the bones. We don't have to go super fancy here. just so I can properly fit this pan on the burner. There we go. And then I think I'm gonna do the Supremes up in some more coconut oil. Just to stay with a nice high smoke point. That way we can get a nice sear on it. You could also do like olive oil or a vegetable oil. But I do love to use coconut oil sometimes. Get a good heaping tablespoon in there. We'll turn that on to medium heat. We don't wanna cook it too, too high because you're gonna burn the chicken skin before it even renders out properly and it's not gonna get crispy that way. And then I'm also turning the pan on for the naan bread. Oh my God. And 
that is on a medium heat. Is everyone still alive? It got quiet. You guys are just patiently waiting for all of the fun to start. the bottom of your pan is nicely coated that way nothing will stick is that a tip cup it is that's my little Sunday tip cup just added it for you guys I know you like to see the stuff drop into there we got a little bit so far today I'm happy with that an eight minute timer to start and then see where we are after that. Whew, Kale, we are wondering where you went. We're still here, don't worry. We waited. So a lot of people tend to put their meat into their pan before it's even hot, one way to tell if it's ready is your oil will start to do like little squiggles in the pan. It won't just look like one layer. That's how I tell that my pan is hot enough. And it should sizzle right away as well. Dandy tongs, and we're pretty much ready.
Hey guys, I'm not going to be able to fit all six of the Supremes in the pan. So I'll be cooking that one after stream, but it will get cooked. We'll do five for now. I mean, there's only four of us eating, so even like three quarters of one of those Supremes is more than enough meat for one person. Sam's shaking his head no. He's hungry. And our non pan feels like it's good to go as well. So let's try a first one and see what happens. Up. And like I said, I've never cooked non bread before. So I'm going to guess you want it to be like a little bit blistery before you turn it over. And it should probably puff up just a little bit. Oh, there we go. We got some pockets. But I'll definitely have to try Ab's way of cooking it. I know, we're getting sizzly. The next nun puffs up a little bit more, guys. The naan almost looks like a chapati instead of a naan bread. Just the way that it's baking up. I might have rolled it a little bit too thin, but it feels super soft. It's still gonna be a good vessel for our butter sauce, always. Sometimes I even just like stuff it with the butter sauce and the chicken and just like eat it as a roll up. Wet the non bread surface. Place that side on this, the hot pan. Turn over the pan. So, what do you do when you turn over the pan then? Or you're just like turning over the pan to get it really nice and hot from the flame? Like, it's looking pretty good. 
It's not as fluffy as I would like. Yum. Those are going into the oven, guys. And our broccoli timer was just about to go off. So that was eight minutes. It's getting some nice char on the outside, but still really crunchy. So I'm going to just put it onto a lower rack in there and do another eight minutes. That way I can check the chicken at the same time as well. Sounds good, Az. Sounds good. It smells so good in here. Even though none of you can smell it every time. There's our little tenda slowly poaching away in the sauce. She's back, and what did you grab for foods? Yeah, you can, Abs, no problem. The sauce is a lot better now that I put some honey into there. Yeah, that was like two years ago already. But you know what? I loved food too much. Oh, garlic bread knots. Yum. Okay. Watching. Let me check this one first, though. That one's blowing up more. Not use a nonstick pen. I love how he's using a temp gun on it. Okay, so I spritzed a little bit of water. And brushed it with water. straight onto the pan. And you kind of just pressed it down. And it looks like it's bubbling right away, hey? This feels really nice though. Oh, those bubbles, guys.
Okay, so it sticks completely to the pan, and then you finish the other side on the flame. I get it now. I thought you took the bread out of the pan, and then just like flipped it over. Okay, well we'll see if it sticks to my cast iron pan. I'll definitely test it out. But that looks really good. And I'm also going to grab my digital thermometer right now to check my chicken. We're going to do a roast to 150 Fahrenheit and then let it rest. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of hard to explain, hey? I'll do like the last four that way abs and see if it works. Hopefully it sticks to the pan. My pan is pretty well seasoned, so I'm not sure if it will. waiting I'm gonna season up my butter chicken sauce right now I know I'm excited too so I'm gonna start with about a tablespoon plus a teaspoon of salt start light and go from there ah, it's getting messy Tastes so much better with salt. The towels aren't that expensive either, hey? Yeah, this pan is so heavy to try and flip over like that. Holy smokes. It's going wild. pretty good bubble on it, but I do want to see what happens when it sits. Mega cheap. I'll have to find an Indian grocery store here for sure. Hey guys, just gonna take this out. So here is our progress on our broccoli. Definitely gonna keep letting it go for more. Like I can't even put my nail into the stem, so it's pretty tough still. And then here is our beautiful chicken. And I'm just going to temp the biggest one to see where we're at for cook time. And then when you're doing this with Supremes, you're going to want to go by the boat. That's 
at about 115 Fahrenheit. So we have just under 40 degrees to go. Let's do another five minutes and go from there. And I think next time I'm gonna roll my nons out to just be round as well. That way it'll fit in the pan a lot better. Smelling super good in here already, guys. Hey. Here is my brush for the water. See, these are just like puffing up in the middle, not all over. So I'm sure the tawa has like a more even heat all around compared to a pan that has edges. How thick do you usually roll out your naan as well? So I think I went a little bit too thin in that aspect. They look good. Okay. If you say that abs, I'll believe you. bring my board back over here to rest the chicken on and then I'll slice it up really nice for our presentation I'm also gonna chop up my cilantro real quick as well for a garnish right now Little bit of cilantro always goes a long way. Holy, this one's going crazy.
Got 10 seconds on my timer again. And then those chicken supremes should rest for at least five minutes before you cut into them. Keep those juices in there. about the same. So let's do four more minutes and call it a day. I'm going to move the broccoli to the lowest rack now because it does have a really nice char on it. It's not burnt though. They are super crispy. Super crispy. Okay, cilantro real quick. Chop this as fine or as coarse as you want. Yeah, I'd still eat it too. go for a little bit finer of a chop here. Either way though, it's gonna look like uh, chopped grass. So you can't be too, too picky on your herb garnishes there. Just a little something, something. That one looks really good. Okay, I'm gonna do one last taste on the butter sauce as well. Dump it into the garbage. <laughs> My dad is with you on that one. He said exactly what you say, it tastes like soap. You're either all for cilantro or you absolutely hate it. There is no in between. Okay, one more teaspoon of salt in there. is coming out guys. So really nicely charred. Now I'm going to sprinkle that fresh lime zest on top. It should become really, really fragrant. Kind of sizzling as it hits the broccoli. Smells really nice. B 
beauty. I love getting a good char on broccoli. Oh no, they stuck together. Okay, I have to deal with that sheet after stream. They got married. Let me check that follow. Amnesia, thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. Okay, let us wet our non red. And stick that on there. Oh God. That didn't work out that well, but this is the test. It's sizzling. I don't know about that piece on the side. I might have to cut it off. Yum. Oh yeah, that feels perfect. One forty seven, guys. That's what we're looking for. So, oven can come off. And then the next thing I'm going to do is just put our chicken onto our cutting board. That way, it doesn't continue cooking in the pan as it rests. Thanks, Amnesia. I appreciate that. I know they do look like a heart shape, hey? Hello, Red Bull. That's amazing. I've been to Naples. Had some amazing food there. That's really hot. Do not touch that. Welcome to the stream. Love when new people find me in here. Let's just turn this down so we can get a little look. So I just touch. Thank you for the follow as well, Red Bull. I don't think it's stuck, guys. <laughs> Definitely didn't stick. I'm glad I didn't turn the pan over and have that fall onto the burner. I can also turn my butter sauce off right now. That's good just to chill there. And I think I'm going to get the coconut rice out that's left over. And you know what I might actually do guys is just saute it really quick in the chicken pan because that would be amazing. So this is the rice that I made the other day with the shrimps and it has some dried apricots in it. So it's nice and sweet as well. Because we got some pretty deadly juices in this pan. And I don't feel like microwaving it. Nope. Should have made a baby man. Yeah, I know. I was already thinking about it. Okay, let's try this again.
It sizzled more this time though. I think it might have worked. medium heat and I'm just going to put a lid over that to steam it quickly bring it up to temp Keep it over the flame just to see what happens. It's actually puffing up. I think it's working. what we uh, ended up with guys but it did stick okay we'll try one more I have one more to do maybe this will be the one is the one guys all right red bull have a great night tutto bene okay guys we're almost there Got a little toss on this rice. Holy, it's gonna taste unreal. It's just soaking up all the juices from the chicken that I sauteed earlier. That stuff in the bottom of the pan was just too good to waste and throw out. Okay, let's get a flip. It's not falling off. And thanks, but these leggings were like $12 and they're seriously comfier than like any $100 pair. to fool around with the way I make the dough next time. But here is our pile of naan. I'm just going to toss the broccoli back into the oven real quick to get a little refresh heat on it. The oven's still hot. And then I'm going to carve up one of these Supremes real quick and then 
ready to plate. Our rice is sizzling nicely. Yeah, I've never like refried coconut rice before. But it's very tasty with all those chicken juices. Okay, let's pick this one. This is the one I'm going for. So whenever you're slicing a supreme, I always like to slice it on the bias. That way you get a really nice presentation. Like this has rested here for at least five minutes already and it's still hot to the touch. So never be afraid to rest your meat before you eat it. You'll thank me later, I swear. So this is our cook, guys. Really, really nice. We kept that skin nice and crispy. can hold up the board even closer if you want. Oh, <gasps> that was terrifying. There you go. <laughs> Broccoli is refreshed. First thing going down onto our plate is the rice. Get out of there. Trying to keep my rim nice and clean. Just for presentation. And then I'm actually just gonna try one of these. really good with the lime on it guys I'm gonna keep this all to just one side so that I can plate the chicken nicely on the other side but I think first I'm gonna ladle this sauce onto the rice chili it's not spicy at all and then obviously you can add as little or as much butter sauce that you want And then on our chicken is gonna go. Actually, you always wanna plate the bone like standing up because that creates height on our plate. I know you guys were kind of wondering about plating and stuff like that. And then I found out the chicken earlier just for presentation. And then the next thing that's gonna go on, <laughs> that end bit of chicken is always the best. And then just some fresh cilantro to bring everything together. And then naan is served on the side. I'm not gonna try and stuff that onto the plate. 
I think I'm just gonna do a little spritz of lime juice as well. And now we shall try. So one close up for you guys. So I know you love it. Get that rotation. Let's eat. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit of the rice with the sauce and see how it is. That's a good butter chicken. And then just a little end piece of chicken here. Has a little bit of skin on it. Gotta test that crunch. Mm-hmm. I love the tang that the yogurt gives it from the marinade. It's such a nice touch. And then our chili lime roasted broccoli. So super nice and charred, but the inside is still really juicy. That's really good to cut the richness from the butter chicken sauce. I've never done that with broccoli before, but I know you guys would love it. Definitely going to make that again. All right, there we go. My fancy style of butter chicken. By no means is this traditional, but I always like to put my own spin on stuff. So that's what I did. And that is it for me today. I will see you guys again tomorrow. I'll go on around 3 p.m. PST. Actually, I'll do it a little bit earlier, probably at one o'clock, I'll be on to make some brioche buns. So feel free to check that out. I'll start two hours earlier than usual. Do a quick little dough mixing stream and then come back on later. And thank you everyone for being here today. So much fun chatting with you all the time. I love to see all the new faces. I went three over my follower goal, so that's amazing. Slowly but surely we're building up. And abs, thank you for like all the pointers on the non bread. We're gonna streamline that eventually. And for anyone else that's new, don't forget to hit that follow button. That way you'll stay up to date for when I go live. You won't miss a thing. And don't forget to check out like all of my social media pages either because I pretty much post daily on there. And I love using Instagram. <laughs> all right, guys, have a great night slash day. And I'll see you tomorrow. Veggie burgers going down. <laughs>